Hello all! Happy Bionicle Day, and welcome to the Knowledge Tower, where we investigate the science behind the Bionicle legend. In today's special investigation, we will be taking a closer look at Kopaka Nuva's defeat of the Rakshi during Bionicle Mask of Light. Half an hour into the movie, three Rakshi are hot on the tail of Takua across a lake in Kowahi, ready to pounce on the fleeing Matoran and claim both him and the Mask of Light for the Makuta. But at the last moment, Kopaka Nuva knocks them into the water of the lake with a blast of ice and quickly freezes it solid, temporarily trapping the sons of Makuta and allowing Takua to escape. This is an exciting scene from the film, and a great showcase of Kopaka's powers, but it also got me thinking. Just how much heat would Kopaka need to pull out of the water with his elemental powers to freeze an entire lake in such a short time frame? It's time to pull out the calculator and find out. Firstly, we will need to estimate just how much water we are dealing with. The movie does not give us any facts or figures about the lake after all, and the novelization doesn't go into that much detail either, simply stating that the lake is small. There are no official definitions that tell us at what size a body of water becomes a lake. However, the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration does provide the following estimates. They say that a lake is generally bigger than 4,000 square meters in area, and a lake is generally more than 6 meters deep, on average. Given that this is a small lake, let's put it right at the bottom of this size range and say that it is these figures exactly. Estimating the volume of the lake is the next step, though in this case we do not know the exact shape of the lake, either when viewing it from the surface or when looking at the shape of the lake bed itself. However, if we simply multiply the area of the lake by its average depth, this will give us a good enough estimate for our purposes. As we determined before, the area of the lake is 4,000 square meters and the average depth is 6 meters. So multiplying these two together gives us an estimated volume of 24,000 meters cubed of water that Kopaka will need to freeze. Given water's density of 997 kilograms per meter cubed, that works out to be a total of 23,928 metric tons of water contained in the lake. Now that we have the amount of water estimated, we next need to work out how much heat energy needs to be removed from it in order to freeze it solid. The energy change needed for water to change phase between liquid and solid is given by this equation where Q is the heat energy in joules, M is the mass of the water in kilograms, and LF is the awesomely sounding measure known as the latent heat of fusion, which is measured in joules per kilogram. The latent heat of fusion depends on the temperature of the water. Given that this takes place in Kowahi, we're going to assume that the water is already at around zero degrees Celsius, meaning that the latent heat of fusion would be 334,000 joules per kilogram. Plugging in the numbers, we get a total of around 7 trillion 990 billion joules of heat that Kopaka would need to remove from the lake in order to freeze it solid. Now, that number is fairly meaningless on its own, so let's put that into context. Your average domestic freezer usually tops out at about 250 watts of power usage. A watt is defined as being one joule of energy being used per second, with two watts being two joules per second, etc. Reviewing the scene from Mask of Light, it takes Kopaka six seconds on screen to completely freeze the lake. So let's use that to convert our energy in joules into watts so that we can make a comparison. 7 trillion 990 billion joules divided by 6 seconds gives us 1 trillion 330 billion watts, meaning the elemental power that Kopaka has put on display here is the equivalent of over 5.3 billion domestic freezers. Is that the end of our calculations? Not quite. There is one key thing we have to remember before we finish up the video. And that is that cold is not actually a real thing. 
It's simply an absence of heat. You can't create cold. You can simply take heat away from one place and move it somewhere else. So, if Kopaka's powers are to obey this rule, then all that heat he removed from the water in those six seconds needs to go somewhere. But where? The air around Kopaka seems to be the obvious choice for this. But he will have to be careful that by freezing the lake, he doesn't inadvertently roast himself, Takua, and Jala alive with the increase in air temperature from the redistributed heat. Given it's never mentioned in story that there is a noticeable increase in air temperature whenever a Toa of Ice uses their powers, let's say that we need to keep this increase small, only one degree Celsius. Over how large a volume of air would Kopaka have to redistribute this heat? Like we did before, we're going to have to make a couple of assumptions. Let's assume that, like the water, the air is also at zero degrees Celsius. And let's also assume that it is at a pressure of one atmosphere. At this temperature and pressure, the specific heat capacity of air is 1.0035 joules per gram per degree Celsius meaning it takes 1.0035 joules to heat up one gram of air by one degree. We also need to take into account the density of air at this temperature and pressure, which is 1.293 kilograms per meter cubed. So, running the numbers, this means that if we want to keep our temperature change to only one degree, then Kopaka will have to spread that heat out over around 5.4 cubic kilometers of the surrounding air. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it interesting. As always with these investigations, analyzing the law of Bionicle always gives the most fascinating results. Happy Bionicle Day everyone, and I hope to see you again soon for another Bionicle Science investigation here at the Knowledge Tower.